game is so lame. I wish I could play some basketball. So before we get to optimizing your basketball shot, we should go over what is optimization first and how do we do it. So optimization is used to find when a certain function is at its maximum or minimum value. So we will be using, we will be using this function to um, show you guys how to do it. So the sum of two numbers is 150 find two numbers so that their product is at a maximum. So in optimization problems, uh, often there are more than one relationship and you have to isolate the variables for the function you want to find the maximum or minimum of until you only have one variable. So in this scenario, we have x plus y as the two numbers and their sum is 150, so x plus y equals 150 and the product p equals xy and we want to optimize p so that it's at its maximum. So first, uh, we'll uh, do some simple algebra. We have x plus y equals 150. We'll isolate the y to equal 150 minus x, and we will plug it back in to the function for p. So we get p equals x, time, um, x times uh, quantity 150 minus x, which comes out to p equals 150x minus x squared. So the next step in optimization is to take the derivative of both sides with respect to your one variable, which is x in this case. You want to take the derivative so you can get the rate of change of the, fun of the function, p in this case, um, and set it to zero. When the derivative is at zero, it's called a critical point, and criti at critical points is when the function is at its maximum or minimum. So in this case, if we take the derivative of p, um, you'll get p prime equals 150 minus 2x, and you set that equal to zero to find the critical point. So 2x equals 150, and x equals 75. And plugging it back into the relationship with y, you get y also equals 75. And when x equals 75 and y equals 75, then the product of these two numbers is at a maximum, and they still add up to 150. All right, so here's the setup for our optimization basketball problem. A basketball player stands d feet from the basket. Let h and alpha be the same as shown in the figure above. Using physics, one can show that if the player releases the ball at an angle theta, then the initial velocity required to make the ball go through the basket satisfies v squared is equal to 16 times the distance over cosine squared theta times tan theta minus tan alpha. Explain why this formula is meaningful only for theta is between pi over 2 and alpha. Why does v approach infinity at the endpoints of this interval? So alpha is equal to zero corresponds to shooting the ball directly at the basket, while alpha is equal to pi over two corresponds to shooting the ball directly upward. In either case, is it possible for the ball to go into the basket? If the angle alpha is extremely close to zero, the ball is shot almost directly at the basket so that it must be launched with great speed, as it can only fall an extremely short distance on the way to the basket. On the other hand, if the angle alpha is extremely close to pi over 2, the ball is launched almost vertically. This requires the ball to travel a great distance upward in order to travel the necessary horizontal distance. In either one of these cases, the ball has to travel at an enormous speed. Alright, for subpart so B, we take alpha is equal to pi over 6 and plot v squared as a function of theta, for theta is between pi over 6 to pi over 2. Verify that the minimum occurs at theta is equal to pi over 3. So if we plot this, then we get a graph that should look like this. And clearly, the minimum occurs where theta is equal to pi over 3, right here. So here, I graphed v squared optimal versus h for a set distance of 15 feet. So as you can see, v squared optimal increases with respect to basket height relative to the shooter. This shows that the minimum velocity required to launch the ball to the basket drops as shooter height increases. This shows one of the ways height is an advantage in free throws. A taller shooter 
You need not shoot the ball as hard to reach the basket. So in part C, we found that V was minimized when F of theta was maximized. So in order to expend the least amount of energy possible, we would want to optimize this so that F of theta is at a maximum value. So in part D, we want to verify that F prime of theta is equal to cosine alpha minus two theta times secant alpha, and show that the maximum value of F of theta on theta alpha to power over two inclusive occurs at theta zero is equal to alpha over two plus power over four. So in the first step, we would need to apply the chain rule and the product rule to find the derivative. And then we would rearrange the equation and simplify by distribution. And then we would set tan is equal to sine over cosine so that we can factor out a secant alpha. And then after we factor out the secant alpha, then we can see that uh, we can factor by grouping so that we can apply the double angle theorems. And then we can apply the cosine sub law of subtraction to indeed see that f prime of theta is equal to secant alpha times cosine alpha minus two theta. And then we would see that a critical point of f theta occurs where cosine alpha minus two theta is equal to zero so that alpha minus two theta is equal to negative power over two. And it is negative because two theta is greater than theta, which is greater than alpha. And this gives us theta is equal to alpha over two plus power over four. And the maximum value f of theta zero takes place at theta zero is equal to Power, alpha over 2 plus power over 4 by the first derivative test. Because the first derivative, first derivative changes from positive to negative at negative when theta is equal to negative power over 2. So in part D, we found that the optimal angle theta 0 is equal to alpha over 2 plus power over 4, which would be the angle between the hoop and the ball divided by 2 plus 45 degrees. So in part E, for a given Alpha, the optimal angle for shooting the basketball is theta zero because v squared is minimized, and therefore the energy required to make the shot is minimized. So that the velocity v optimal at the optimal angle theta zero satisfies v squared optimal is equal to 32d cosine alpha one minus sine alpha, and then that is equal to 32d squared over negative h plus root of d squared plus h squared. So first we want to plug in theta zero and simplify, and then apply the sine law of addition, and then we want to use the identity that follows from the sine law of addition and then we would get to v squared optimal is equal to 32 d cosine alpha over 1 minus sine alpha and then we can solve for cosine alpha and sine alpha and then plug it back in to get v squared optimal is equal to 32 d squared over negative h plus h root of h squared plus d squared